Well, good evening. It is just about 8 o'clock. This is Mary from Stamps and Lingers, and as promised, we're going to make a card this evening. Um, I showed you just a tiny little teaser picture this morning on my blog post. So this is the card we're going to make, and it uses the uh, Basket Bunch stamp set and the matching framelits called Basket Builder and you can get these as a bundle. Now these are the, in the occasions catalog so there's really no telling if it's going to make it to the annual catalog or not. So if you want these, now's the time to get them. Now before we really get started, um, I've had a few people request to see if we could have Finn make a cameo. So I'm going to do that because he's right under the table right now. So hang tight while I get the camera, my phone off of the stand, and hopefully I won't fork it up. If I do, I'll try to get it fixed, okay? Hang tight. Here we go. Now it's not going to be really great. Come here, Finn. Come. Come. Come here. It's like, oh, this doesn't look good for... The there he is. There's the Finn Meister. Hey, Karen. Hey, Julie. How are you? You see Finn? Yep, he's a little hot. He's going to be one of those hot dogs. Look at that. Ooh, it looks like he's a ghost. No, he really exists. It's just really bad lighting in here. I don't have the rest of the lights on in the living room. So there he is. That's his cameo for today. Thank you, Finn, for being a good boy. All right, now I'm going to carefully put this back in the stand, hopefully without putting it to sleep. And we'll get it lined up. Good, you saw him. Hi, Carrie. Glad you could come. Yes, that was Finn. One day we'll do one where it's a little better lighting, but, uh, but not today. So, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I think some of you were planning on making the card at the same time I am, so we're going to do a little bit different format than usual. But this is the card we're making. This is the front. You can see we're going to be using the little carrot die in the basket builder. Uh, framelit set. I'm going to use a couple of swir swirly scribbles dies and then we're going to use the real pretty petal burst teeth. So I hope you all who wanted to play along with me have those things ready. So I'm going to set this aside. Oh, and there's the envelope if you're interested. That's the flap and there's the front. Okay. Alrighty then. So I'll set that aside on my ever so tidy desk. See, you don't get to see that because, you know, I really don't want you to see my disgusting ducks. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Hi, Karen. All right. So, um, those of you who are playing along, going to need some card stock out. You need your um, four and a quarter by eleven piece of tangerine tango, and it needs to be scored and f ready to fold um, at the five and a half mark. Then you're going to need two pieces of Island Indigo. This is like my favorite blue color. I just, I love it. And I'm really hoping we don't do a reset quite yet because I don't want this one to go away. So these are four, four inches by five and one quarter each. And then we have two pieces of Whisper White. And these are um, three and seven eighths this direction by five and an eighth this direction. One for the card front and one for the inner liner. So we're going to take the uh, two pieces of Island Indigo and one piece of Whisper White and set it aside for now. And we're going to start with our card front. Oh, you also are going to need a piece of pear pizzazz so that you can cut out some carrot tops and some tangerine tango, a little bit of scrap that you can cut your carrots out with and some pumpkin pie. Now this is the result of a challenge who's, mm, I think this is a My Favorite Things color challenge. I probably wouldn't have put these colors together on my own, so you know, there it is. Okay, so we'll set these aside. The first thing we're going to do is pull out the Big Shot, and we're going to emboss one piece of the Whisper White in our Petal Burst Teeth. Um, and I'm going to use my, uh, my new platform, my new Big Shot platform, take the thin die adapter off, there we go. 
go. And then we're just going to run that through like that. Easy peasy. Nice and squeezy. And then we're just going to pull that out. Hi, Jean. I'm glad you made it. You're going to want to go back and check the video replay at the end when we're done here because Finn made a cameo appearance at the beginning. So anybody who's interested in that. Okay, so now we can put our embossing folder away. And I'm also uh, just going to go ahead and set aside my new platform and get my magnetic platform ready because that's a little bit easier when you're playing with the thinlets. Okay, so here's a here's a tip that one of my downlines, and Julie, you're on, so I'm calling you out there. Yes, Amy, you missed Finn, but he'll be on the replay, I promise. Uh, it was really dark, so he looks like he's a you know floating head, but that's okay. So what I ended up doing, based on Julie's uh, this, um, recommendation, it was a good one, is I wrote, do not cut on one, and just in case I was silly, cut on the other one. So now I try to keep this as my bottom, so it's getting all nasty-fied looking, and this one is more or less, you know, not so nasty-fied. So that's kind of what I'm trying. We'll see how it goes. So that's what we're going to do when it comes time to make some cuts. And in fact, we'll go ahead and do that right now. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. I don't know how you guys feel about cardstock preservation, whether you like to, uh, you know, hang on to it. But I saw a trick somewhere. And basically, these are my, remember, these are my inner line, these are my mats, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, the die from Swirly Scribbles. I need two of these. This is. You can see which one it is. It's not the one with the little pokey outy things. It's the other one, kind of the largest one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those out of right in the middle of my two liners. And that way I'll get my wreaths. These are going to be covered up with my Whisper White, and so you'll never know that it was there. All right. So let's go ahead and just cut two of those right quick like a bunny. See how I did that bunny basket bunch? Get it? Get it? Do you get it? Okay. We'll go back through there like that. And that'll be good. That should do us right there. But you know what? Just because we're on live video, I'm going to do it one more time. Now, Julie also said that she saw a tip to, to reverse the uh, reverse at 180 degrees. And that would work too to help make it cut better. But I'm just going to do it like that. Okay. So, see, you got a big giant hole, but oh, by the way, it's going to be completely covered. But a bing! My husband, he likes to preserve money, so you know, I learned it from him. All right, so now I'm going to push, use my little craft pick here to push out my pieces. You know this trick, right? That it's easier sometimes to push the little pieces, the extra pieces, out when it's still in the die. Just because. Now, how many people have I got playing along with me? Anybody? I thought Karen was going to play and maybe Julie. Okay, so there's one wreath. Now I'm going to take my other piece. First I'm going to clear off my little extra pieces. Try not to drop them on the floor because Finn is waiting under there to pounce on any kind of cardstock he can find. He's the paper eatingest dog I've ever had. Alright. And then we're gonna go Karen and Julie. Okay. If I get to going too fast, ladies, um, I'd say holler at me, but just scream it on a comment and I'll try to slow down. I'm pretty slow, so until I start thinking I'm keeping y'all away from doing something else and I, I start rushing, I'll try to keep keep things easy going. Okay, and there's our other piece and we'll set that aside. Now, I'm done with this for a minute. So I'll get it out the way. Push these out. This is a really simple, quick and easy card. Um, you know this Swirly Scribbles, this is a, this is a stamp set and framelit set bundle that when I first saw it I was like, eh, meh, who cares?
chairs. That's silly. But I love it. It's so cool. Who would have thunk you could have made... Well, I mean, who would make an island indigo wreath anyway? But I did. But who would have thunk you could make wreaths for Christmas and Easter wreaths and all sorts of wreaths. You just can make wreaths until until you're done with wreaths. Okay. So, let me put this back. Alright. Now... We will go ahead and put our um, card front onto its island indigo mat. Now look guys, you could do either way here. It's up to you entirely. Um, I won't use this side because obviously I had a, yeah, a little extra some other green color. Wait a minute, what are you eating? Dog. H hang on people, pause while I save a piece of paper from the dog. Here, this is the evidence. This is what he does. He reaches in my garbage, he pulls it out, and within moments it's slobbered, and within 12 moments it would be all over my living room. So it's back in the garbage so he can get it again. Anywho, what I was saying is, if you preferred, you ladies who are doing this with you, if you prefer, you could put the debossed side up, and that would that would be fun too. So here's how it looks with the embossed side. And here's how it looks with the deboss. I am going to put my emboss side up because, well, at least for the time being, it does not have any green ink all over it. So we'll put a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue on here. And then put it on our mat like a so. And then I'll get a little anal about it and try to squish it around and make it exactly perfect. And then later I'll have the card all done and I'll go, oh my goodness, it's completely crookedy. But that's okay. Alright, so that's there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the wreath on the card. Now, when you're doing this, it helps to make the wreath a little fuller. See how you got the piece that sticks out the top? So what I did is I just kind of put those on opposite sides and offset the wreath a little. Dog! <laughs> I'm going to kill him. Hang on just a minute. Ben, I'm busy. <laughs> I think he must think that now that he's a movie star, he can do whatever he wants. Okay, so anyway, as I was saying, if you offset it a little bit, it's a little more, it makes it look a little fuller, and that's kind of cool. So that's what we're going to do. Just going to put some liquid glue. Don't go crazy with this stuff. It's the best stuff on the planet, so you don't need very much of it. Thanks, Jerry. That's a, I, I like to do that every once in a while when I think about it. Sometimes I don't think about it. Um, it's one of the advantages of kind of keeping your color palette um, a little bit simpler. So... By having the wreaths be the same color as the mat, I didn't do that in order to make it um, be a simpler color palette, but that worked out for me. But I like to do that to kind of tie things together. You know what they say, three colors, three colors and a neutral, I think, is about max, and that's about... That's about as much as I go. Now, when you get those challenges out there that want you to use four or five colors, well, that's what you do. And you just adapt and, and make it work. Make it work, baby. Well, that's why there's a cherry cobbler bow on this mat, on this uh, wreath, made with retired baker's twine. So, my bad. We're going to use the stuff that's available. Dog, if you are in that trash... You know, I think he knows I probably won't beat him. I think that's the thing. He is fully aware of the fact that I am not going to beat him. Okay, so we're going to put that on top a little bit offset, just so we get a little more wreathy looking. Boom! One each wreath. Cool, right? Okay, ladies, for those of you playing along at home, let's make some carrots. What's this? Oh, yes, I don't like it. Okay, so I made carrots out of pumpkin pie 
and Tangerine Tango cardstock. And all I did was, first I stamped a few carrots, like so. Wait one while I find mm, a block. A block would be good. Where are the blocks, Mary? Where are the blocks, Mary? <laughs> Nicely done. When all else fails, don't have a block handy. That's a good idea. Okay, so what I did is I stamped Tangerine Tango ink on Tangerine Tango cardstock and Pumpkin Pie ink on Pumpkin Pie cardstock. So let's do that. We only need five carrots total. So ladies who are playing along, make whichever colors you like, however many of them you like. I'm going to do three Tangerine Tango carrots. And then I'm going to clean off my pad, change out to my pumpkin pie, and I'm going to make two pumpkin pie carrots. Okay. And you can kind of keep that out because we're going to need it to decorate our envelope. Am I still alive? Somebody answer me. My uh, computer did something weird. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we are going to cut out carrots. And, okay, good. We are still alive. Thank you, Karen. So, this is my little trick. Because I don't want, I don't want carrot tops that are carrot colored. Because I know that there's gourmet carrots, but I think all of their tops are green. So we're going to cheat the challenge just a little bit and use a little pair of pizzazz. So what we're going to do is pull out our big shot again with the magnetic platform ready. And then we should probably find our other cutting mat. Okay, so here's what I want you to do, ladies. We're going to take our pair of pizzazz and we're going to just stack it underneath whichever color you're doing first, like so. And then take your little carrot and place it right over the top of the image. Of course, I got myself backwards here, didn't I? Hey, work in progress. Work in progress. Okay. And then we'll put our not cut mat over the top and run that through, run it back. Okay. And then when you pull it out, you're going to have two pieces. One is going to become the top, and one will be the carrot in just a second. So now, Murmur amongst yourselves, those of you playing along, cut out all your carrots like that, getting your pear pizzazz card top on top. Okay, here's a little trick with the, uh, with the magnetic platform. You see how it wants to go over here? Because magnets do whatever magnets want, right? So at that point, what I do is I figure out where this thing wants to be. It wants to be here, so I just move my cardstock and I line the magnetic, I line the die up where the magnet is happy with that. Did that make sense? Okay. Hope it did. So then we're going to put our top on and run that through. Run it back. I usually get a couple of little goes because it's easier than trying to fix it later. Alright. Two down. Three to go. Alright. Get rid of my pumpkin pie. Still hanging on to my pear pizzazz though. So what's the biggest trick? Oh yeah, making sure you have cardstock underneath. All right, we're gonna do our tangerine tangos. Do three of those. Do you guys realize that in 
two weeks. Those of us who are demonstrators and going to on stage are gonna know what's in the new catalog. excited. Those of you who aren't demonstrators, if I've got anybody watching that isn't a demonstrator, either tonight or tomorrow, as a recorded video, I can help you with that. I would love to have you join my team, and this is such a good time to do it. Celebration is the perfect time. Not only do you get all of your normal benefits, spend $99, get $125 worth of product, but through the end of celebration, which is Friday, you'll get another two stamp sets. That's a pretty good deal. That could be like $200 worth of good stuff for $99. Oh yeah, and it ships for free. So that's kind of huge too. So if you are ready to join and get that 20 to 25% discount, let me hook you up. See what it's doing right there? That's because the magnet is, the magnet knows all. So we're just going to move the cardstock to a place where the magnet stops being persnickety. Oh, that didn't work out, did it? There we go. Why don't you just make it as hard on yourself as you can, Mare? Because that way it's more fun. All right. And there we go. All right, carrots are almost done. I know, Amy, right? And I just, I'm going to brag on myself just the tiniest bit because I'm kind of excited about it. I get to go to center stage this year for the first time because I was able to promote to Silver Elite. Thanks to the folks who signed up with me. I appreciate that very much. Okay, Mr. Big Shot's getting out the way. And now... We're going to do a little carrot making. We're going to make some carrots, people. You ready to make carrots? Okay. We need our scissors. Everybody get your paper snips out. We're going to do a little really hard fussy cutting. And by really hard, I, of course, mean really easy. So, ready? Here we go. Everybody, just make a rounded cut and cut the top off of each carrot. Okay? And then, on your pair of pizzazz, just... Well, you don't even have to do that. We're just going to put this on here. Take a little bit of liquid, liquid glue. A little liquid glue. Now, those of you who are ordering, my ordering special is still going on. So all this week, when you order $50, you'll get a free bottle of glue. You'll get double peppermint points. See? Carrot. Ta-da! Now, just do that. For all five of your carrots, ladies. So for those of you who are playing along, am I going too fast? Or would you like me to speed the heck up? Well, I don't know if I could speed up even if you asked me to. So maybe don't ask me to do that. Okay. I'll just put that on there like that. And you can just wiggle it until it's where you want it. See how easy? Did I stamp the green? I did not. I th it just seemed like too much work. Because then I would have had to individually cut out each piece. And by doing it this way, you get the idea that there's a green uh, carrot top there. But you got to cut them out both at the same time. So save a little time and make it easy peasy on yourself. I like it to be easy peasy if I can. Okay, I'm getting the, the, the speed is good, so that's good. Sometimes I feel like I have big old sausages on my hands instead of, I like to have little dainty fingers. 
but I don't. Uh oh, now look at now look, I'm starting to get I'm gonna get anal here in a minute. Ooh. We're gonna pretend I like that one, okay? Just don't look, people. Don't look. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Now, what I would love for you folks to do, if you would, is tomorrow I'm going to update the post with uh, all of the card cut information and add in my challenge references. And there will also be a link to this video on YouTube. What I'd like to know, if you would leave me a comment on that blog, if you like this format, or if you prefer where I just run through it and do it as a as a demo versus as what is essentially a make and take. Because we going to make it and you're going to take it. So I'd like to know if this works for you. I kind of like it because I think I know that things are going on well. I think you're not bored. I'm always worried that you're going to be bored with my other format. Okay, so let's see where we're at. We have... Um, five carrot tops made. Three of them will go on the front and two of them will go on the inside. Um, I like to every once in a while put a die cut on the inside of my card because people don't expect it and and I think it's kind of fun. So there you go. Okay. So next up we're going to make a bow out of the actually active and available for purchase cherry cobbler baker's twine. That's the little thin stuff. And you can see I haven't used it yet. Huh. So because I I really liked how this uh, solid thick baker's twine came out with a double bow, I think I'm, uh, I'm going to probably use three strands of baker's twine to make this bow. And that could be a little persnickety because sometimes this uh, this little twisty baker's twine gets a little twisty when you're using it. Um, but we're going to take a chance, okay? Take a chance with me. No, wait, that's not right. Is, is that an ABBA song? What was that? Where did that come from, Mary? Where did that come from? Okay. Now... We're just going to cut some pieces, roughly equal length. Now, you know how to get rid of these little, these little bendy thingies, also called folds, also called creases? I usually just get my fingers a little wet, and you can kind of rub it out just like that. Okay. So, we'll make another cut. I think three will be fun. Okay. Go away. Alright. Now we're just going to make us a bow. We're not going to get real head up about its size right now. Right now we just want to make sure we can, well, even make a bow. You know there's days I can't make a bow to save my life. And then there's other days when bows just make, so... I always hope that when I'm doing it for you on camera, that it'll be one of those days. The days where it makes, not the days where it doesn't make. Okay, that is going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah, boy, I really like that solid better, but that's okay. If you guys still have some of that solid baker's twine, please feel free to use it on your card as you're making. Okay. So now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take two of my Tangerine Tango carrots and I'm going to put them like that and then I'm going to have a pumpkin pie one underneath. So basically I'm making a bunch of carrots and I'm just going to use a little liquid glue on just the carrot top. She says just the top that's going to make it kind of pop out. I'm just going to stick that down. This is very scientific. I'm going to do like that. We're making kind of a, you know, like a bunch of carrots. 
because that'll be so cute with the sentiment. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> okay. And there we have our bunches of carrots. And then we're going to see where our... I'm almost out of glue dots on this roll. I'm going to take a glue dot and put it on the bunch. And then we're going to take our prefabricated bow and we're going to stick it on the glue dot like so. And I am going to leave my little tails tailified right now until I get my sentiment banner on and then we'll adjust accordingly. Okay? So let's put that aside for half a second and we're going to make our sentiment and I'm going to use the basket bunch and where are you? Where are you? Thanks a bunch. Where are you? Thanks a bunch. There you are. Okay. And we'll stamp him on a piece of white cardstock that I do not have out, so wait one. Wait one. This is where my portfolio filled with scraps comes in so handy because I don't need to screw up a whole piece of cardstock, so I'll just pull out an extra little scrap. And I'm going to stamp it in cherry cobbler. Everybody still with me? Alright. Straight down. Right up. Perfect. And then I'm going to use my fun little banner from the Bunch of Banners Framelits. Now this is kind of fun and you should, you should remember this. This is the banner die that I'm using. And you can, when, you, when I cut this out, the result is going to be a frame. So you can use this two ways. You can either use it as the solid or you could make a frame to add to any of your cards. So just something to remember, you get two for the price of one. Now y'all have just seen my prowess with my big shot, so I'm going to just go off screen for just a second and cut that out. So ladies, while, while I'm cutting, you should be cutting. Let's all cut, okay? Okay. Here we go. And so we have us a little slightly off-center, but that's okay. It's a handmade card sentiment. And we'll put that back for another day. Alrighty, here we go. Now, I'm going to take one of my favorite things, some Stampin' Dimensionals, and put a few across the back of that. Never have too many dimensionals, I don't think. Okay, so get out the way, and then we're going to pick this up like yay, get these off of there. Oh, I should put it on right side up, safety tip. And then we're just going to set it right in the middle there. Don't set that down until you're happy with it, Mary. Alright, there we go. And then we'll let our little tails hang down. And we're going to cut them off a little bit. And some days with the fingers, the previously mentioned sausages at the end of my hands, just refuse to do what I need them to do like right now. Come on hands, don't fail me now. There we go. Alright, so that looks about right. And that is my card front, folks.
All right, so I'm going to set that aside and pull out my reserved inner liner piece. And you can see where we're going. You made my day. We're just going to stamp a sentiment. We're going to put a, our other two carrots on there. And then we'll be pretty well done with the card, so hang tight. All right. All right, let's see. Hey, Pat. Facebook Live videos are too long. Yep, they are a little long. That is true. And in the YouTube, you can kind of fast forward. So, so there you go. That's a good point. That is a good point. All right. Again, we're going to use Cherry Cobbler. And just kind of eyeball it so we're straight. And there you go. And then take your two leftover uh, carrots and you can put them however you like. I kind of like them at the end. So, a little bit of glue. Okay, there's that, and we'll pull out our holy mat, make a little, put a little liquid glue on the back of this liner. Thanks, Pat. I hope you like hope you like it. Alright, and then we're just going to put it into our Tangerine Tango card base. Preferably right side up. I just got ink or glue everywhere. That was really good. Remember this the safety tip people with glue. If you do like I did and you get glue where you don't want it, don't panic. Don't try to rub it away. Just uh, maybe dab it with a little piece of clean paper towel to get the excess excess off. And then when it's dry, uh, come back with your artist eraser and, and get rid of that. And then we're going to put the front on with um, Stampin' Dimensionals. Now, here's, here's the truth of the matter. If I was all by myself and nobody was watching, I would be carefully cutting these edges to make those, and I still will. But it takes a little extra time, so we're not going to do that. Thanks, Pat. If you'll watch at the front of this, I don't know if you were on right at the beginning, but right at the beginning of this particular video when it posts tomorrow for YouTube, um, well, or tonight when it goes li uh, it goes on as a video, uh, Finn made a little cameo right at the beginning, so you can see his little doggy face. And then he proceeded to get all the paper out of my trash can because he thought that since I was on camera, I wouldn't do anything about it, but I fooled him. All right, oopsie, that was, that was very close to being bad right there. Okay, and here comes the card front. Use your calibrated eyeball. Oh, thank you, Pat. Yeah, he's pretty cute. Unfortunately, he knows it. Okay, ladies, there you go. That is the card. And 
Um, I'm going to show you how I made these little carrots, and then I will let you do those at your leisure. Because once you've done, seen one and done one, yeah, there's kind of just a bunch of them. I'll show them to you on the flap. So that's where we're going with it. And get my uh, my carrot back out. So what I want you to do is let's start by making pumpkin pie carrots. So get your pumpkin pie ink pad out and also your pear pizzazz ink pad out. Okay. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Carrie. So here's what you do. You ready? Watch closely. I'll try to make it so you can see it. Maybe I should put it where it's in the screen. Okay. This is the beauty of a photopolymer stamp. Take and uh, just barely get the greens on the pear pizzazz pad. And then put your carrot on your pumpkin pie pad. And then, boom. And then repeat as many times as you like. The only hard part is, remember which pad is a carrot and which pad is the top. There you go. And so, you just keep doing it as many times as you like. And then, when I got all of those on, I cleaned off my stamp and then I uh, used Tangerine Tango and Pear Pizzazz and added in some more carrots. On the front, I just made a little bunch of carrots and at the end of everything, when I had everything stamped, I took my pumpkin pie stamp and write marker and I colored all the all the carrots in. Okay, you don't want to use the Tangerine Tango one because it's t just enough too dark that it'll take away the lines of the carrots. All right, and that, ladies, is how you do it. And I'm going to stop there with that because I think you can continue to make carrots on your own at your leisure. Is that an ask me how I know moment? Um, well, <clears throat> sure. Yes. Yes, it is. The only good thing is at least I recognized that I had done it, but it required an additional stamp cleaning that I hadn't planned on. So, yeah. So there's that. All right, ladies, before we go, you used grapes. Good idea. Good idea. All right. So before I go, I want to show you one more thing, ladies. Just as a reminder, my blog candy is still available to be entered for, that was bad grammar, but you know what I mean, Here's a reminder what it is. A pack of 8.5 by 11 in color 2016-2018 cardstock. The window shopping stamp set in clear. The So Very Much stamp set in clear. Make Medallion, one of my favorite stamp sets going in photopolymer because that's how it comes. Ooh, what's this? What's this? A pack of glimmer paper can't get them anymore. How about a box of watercolor pencils and some 3 8 inch metallic ribbon combo pack and just because I got like you I'm throwing in a pretty thank you card made with the so very much stamp set. So go to my blog you can see how to enter every $25 order gets an entry and I will be drawing from everybody's entries on Saturday the 1st of April. Alright guys I'm headed out. Let me know if you have any more questions, okay? Bye.